welcome to Bajo Window to the South. We are your hosts, Denitza Garcia. And I'm Olga Sanchez de la Vega. And do you know that when you go to a business, sometimes they ask you if you're going to pay for cash or a credit card? And mm. if you say credit card, there are times that they are uh, charging like a special fee and mm, they're not supposed to. So we're going to tell you what to do if that happens to you. How do you make a report if you're charged a commission for paying with a card in Tijuana? These are the steps you must follow if you're charged a fee when paying with a credit card. Being charged a commission for paying with a credit card is something that is common, but it's an improper fee as the consumer is in no obligation to pay it. There have been many cases where different places in Tijuana charge a commission and we are here to tell you how to report when these situations occur. According to the Federal Law of Consumers Protection, LFPC, providers don't have the authority to apply commercial coercive methods or abusive clauses, which is why when something like this happens, you must act immediately and put a stop to it. When you're charged, you must get in contact with the financial institution which the provider is a client of or with the National Commission for the Protection and Defense of Users of Financial Services, CONDUCEF. You must inform them about the establishment who charge you this extra commission or fee so that the institution can take the necessary measures, such as suspending their use of terminals as charging commissions, it's a violation of contract conditions. We recommend businesses are charging commissions for using credit cards in Tijuana. Be careful, this is not allowed. To report to Conducef, call the following number, 5554487000. Seven thousand extension six two seven one or eight hundred nine 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 eighty eighty. To do it through Profeco, you can call eight hundred four six eight eight seven two two at no cost in any part of Mexico. You can also send an email to the following address: teléfono del consumidor .gov .mx. Lastly, the most important thing is to look for another provider who doesn't do this improper actions. Today in Baja Window to the South, we're going to take you all the way to Venezuela, but we're here in <laughs> Tijuana with Ojo de Cesar. Ojo de Cesar, welcome. Gracias, gracias. ¿Cómo estás? Excelente, excelente. Gracias a Dios. Muy bien arropado, muy bien recibido por los tijuanenses. Si algo de lo que se caracteriza el mexicano y el tijuanense es que adopta mucho al extranjero. Esto claro de que seamos muy buenas personas, ¿no? Obviamente a la persona mala pues no se le puede abrir mucho las puertas, ¿no? Pero vengo con buenos ejemplos, vengo de una buena familia y pues nada, aquí aprovechando todo. Y con un mega talento. Cuéntanos, de, ya sé que tienes ahorita, o oh, vas a hacer unas exposiciones, vas a viajar, ¿qué es lo que viene? Y... Cuéntanos qué es lo que ahorita, estamos esperando. Ahorita es el resultado de, de, de años de trabajo acá. Aquí tengo ya tres años y medio, sí. ya casi tocando los cuatro. Eh, vengo con, con, una, con una gira nacional que ya lo hice el, el año pasado, pero nada más toqué tres, cuatro ciudades. Sí. Entre esas acá cerca en La Baja, otras en Ciudad de México, Guadalajara. Este año dije yo vamos a hacerlo un poco más grande, que ojalá y cada vez sea mucho más grande. Este año van a ser siete ciudades, entre esas creo que hay dos por ahí por confirmar aparte de esas. Los Cabos, La Paz, Ciudad de México, Querétaro, Guadalajara, San Miguel de Allende, Guanajuato, Morelia, Cancún. ¿Quién se, ¿quién se bueno. quiere apuntar? ¡Oh, my God! ¡Las mejores Vamos ciudades! A estar, voy a estar conociendo, aparte, que me, lo que me encanta de esto es poder tener la libertad de expresar sí. con mi arte y poder conocer todos esos lugares, ¿no? De una vez empaparme con la cultura, ¿no? Claro. Y, 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 y tener como esas experiencias en cada lugar, ¿no? Que, México tiene eso, esa diversidad en cada estado donde va. Es una comida diferente, un acento diferente, una persona diferente. O sea, está increíble eso y es muy bonito que esa diversidad. Que aquí en Tijuana, sí. nomás aquí en Tijuana, aquí está todo. Aquí representa creo que todo el país, yo creo. Y sabes, es, es un orgullo y es un placer escuchar eso de ti, de una persona tan joven que viene aquí con todo el sentido de la palabra, con tantas fuerzas, con tanto entusiasmo y que te pudieron recibir aquí, pero no solamente... El recibimiento que has tenido aquí en Tijuana es también lo que nos has portado tú a nosotros, a Tijuana. Así es, Y así quiero es. que nos cuentes un poco de eso. Pues mira, yo vine con una idea de, de poder expresar por medio de mi pasión, por medio de mi arte, ¿no? 
un mensaje de conciencia, ¿no? Pues yo practico el surrealismo, sí. esa es mi obra. En ese surrealismo es una manera de, de digamos que, de transformar lo que es la realidad y hacerlo de una manera surrealista, que es lo que hacemos nosotros con la imaginación, claro. básicamente. Entonces yo, yo quería que mi pensamiento, yo desde pequeño siempre he tenido esa capacidad de decir, pero ¿por qué esto es así? ¿Por qué tiene que ser así? Yo lo quiero hacer como, como, como yo quiero, o sea, sí, yo, claro. puedo, yo quiero, quiero inventar una manera de hacerlo que obtengamos el mismo resultado, pero hay atajos, hay otras maneras de, ¿no? Entonces, eso me fue, ese estudio me fue dando, ¿no? Sí. Este, la, por la pintura pasé por muchos estilos. Claro. Luego me topo con el surrealismo de Salvador Dalí, eso me explota la cabeza, porque digo, este es el instrumento con el cual yo puedo poder expresar. Entonces comienzo a hacer un elefante que las orejas son alas de mariposa, Ay, un claro. avión con alas de, de águila. Entonces comienzo a, a, a poder topar con eso, ¿no? A, a poder agarrar, por ejemplo, obras literarias. Por ejemplo, ahorita estoy haciendo una, una serie que es basada en la literatura de Edgar Allan Poe. Wow. Edgar Allan Poe tiene una, una escritura espectacular, es wow. totalmente descriptiva, lo cual me permite a mí poder tomar cada espacio, él por medio de la escritura, te hace sentir sensaciones, claro. textura, Mira, olor. mira, ya lo siento, ya lo siento. <risas> Exacto, es la energía, es la claro. energía que, 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 que se puede leer, o sea, imagínense, que leyendo. Sí. Entonces yo dije, yo quiero que cuando una persona vea mi pintura sienta lo que yo estoy sintiendo al leer esto. Entonces interpreté su, 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 sus escritos claro. y los convertí en una obra. Wow, ¿Qué quisieras decirle aquí a esta cámara, a tu cámara, a todos los jóvenes que están escuchándote ahorita y que no haya ni por dónde empezar? No, mira, a los jóvenes y a las personas mayores, porque nadie se salva de esto. Claro. Hay personas de 40, 50 años que todavía no han cumplido su sueño y es por miedo, el confort, claro. que ya todo el mundo está súper clavado en el confort y les da miedo arrepentirse, les, les da miedo arriesgarse, mejor claro. dicho, les, les da miedo tomar esa decisión de decir, va, y aunque ven la cuesta arriba, yo le digo, háganlo. Tienes toda la razón. Háganlo, o sea, es, es simplemente, es cliché, los he escuchado en 40 mil coach motivacionales. Hazlo. Do it. ¿Qué Just estás haciendo? <risa> o sea, ¿qué estás esperando? Comienza con algo, con claro, lo que sea, esperando? pero comienza. Planifícalo. Yo para venirme para acá yo llegué sin nada. Llegué con unos amigos, con una deuda de mil dólares por lo de los boletos, pero con la capacidad de poder transformar mi realidad. Claro. Y a, eso, y a eso voy, eso es lo que yo hago con mis obras también. Muchísimas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Es un placer tener un talento tan joven que vienes, les digo, baja Window to the South desde Venezuela. Estás aquí Así es. evolucionando todo lo que es el arte y también dándonos una perspectiva nueva, una perspectiva fresca y con el, lo que estás también, la inspiración que recibes de lo que estás viendo aquí en este país, que eso para nosotros, muchísimas gracias. Sí, es... no, y bien lo decía Salvador Dalí, sí. no, hay, no hay nada más surrealista que México. ¡Ah! <risa> Así lo dijo. Ve nada más. <risa> muchísimas gracias y bienvenido a Baja Window to the South. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Ojo de César, for being here with us and for showcasing your amazing talent here in Tijuana. Now we're going to go into another completely different type of art. We're going to learn the story and the history of El Burro Zebra. The zebra donkeys from Tijuana, Mexico are nicknamed Sonkeys. They are donkeys painted with fake zebra stripes so tourists are attracted and will pay the owner to take photos that are souvenirs for them. But what's the story behind? People taking pictures with a donkey, live donkey, uh, from back in those days, obviously they didn't get stripes. The story of the stripes is the, the, the interest one. But the thing is that um, uh, this, uh, this picture of a bullfight There was a photographer called Roy Magruder. Roy, back in the early 1915s, 1920s, uh, made the first photo boot in which he represented the bull ring, the matador, the toro, uh, the bull, and also they got a donkey. So the first photo set that used intentionally 
a donkey for a picture was this guy called Roy McGruder. Uh, we believe that this is the origin of the right now famous Burro Zebra. When the Mexican Revolution was happening in Tijuana, tourism was flourishing. So every time tourists wanted a souvenir photo with the donkey, this is what happened. You need the picture for the souvenir. Okay, so you take the picture. Um, if it was a very bright day and you got the picture with a white donkey, the little donkey didn't appear. You only see in the picture the mouth of the donkey, maybe the, the, the ear of the animal. And then if it was very night and you get the picture with a black donkey, it didn't appear in the picture. So suddenly, back in the early, late 30s, a photograph painted a dots, dots in the donkey and suddenly started appearing in the picture, okay? So uh, we believe, we haven't investigated, uh, in those days, the first zebra appeared in the San Diego Zoo. So apparently, this photographer went to San Diego Zoo, see the zebra, get to Tijuana, try to imitate that pattern of the lines. And the first picture that we got from a burro zebra was back in 1939. So that's the history of the burro zebra. Unfortunately, donkeys are animals in danger of extinction and they stopped doing this in Tijuana a few years ago. So this tradition of the photo ended. Worldwide, the donkey is a species that is in danger of extinction. In Mexico, we used to have 10 million donkeys five, 10 years ago, and right now we only got around 300,000 donkeys. In Tijuana, back in the early 30s, our investigation says that used to be more than 30 wagons and more than 60 donkeys, burro zebras. Right now, they only have seven. If you want to see the representation of a zebra donkey and take a picture with it, you can visit the Tijuana Museum in Avenida Revolución, where most of the donkey zebras used to be. For visitors here in the 1989 TJ Museum, uh, all of our, of our um, media is, uh, you can find us as Tijuanidad. It, you can reserve there and that's it. Thank you very much for coming here. Well, how about that? Okay, that's the real story of it, right? Who doesn't have a photo with this donkey, right? <laughs> From here. Yes, of course. <laughs> well, now let's find out what Denise has for us. She's going to take us to another spectacular place with our favorite foodie. Hi everybody, this is your girl Denise Jacobo, better known as Foodie from TJ, and today we're in Rosarito and we're visiting El Arroyo Cocina Campestre. And before I show you how cute this place is, we are going to also taste their food. So let's just jump into it and let me show you what is this place all about. Come on, let's go. So we are joined now with Mario Yorba and he's going to talk to us about the dishes and all this delicious food. So thank you so much, Mario, for opening up to us your restaurant. Thanks. You're welcome, Denise. So we want to know what delicious things we have here in this table. Can you explain Well, this is some of our, our more popular dishes. Okay. First, we have panela cheese that is just here on the flat top served over salsa verde, salsa roja, and a cactus salad. Okay. Another one is a torta de chilaquiles, which is a little bit of chilaquiles with carne asada, Ooh. an egg, sour cream, and cheese. Oh, I love sour cream. It's a combination of a torta and chilaquiles. And then our machaca ranchera, very popular here. It's, uh, it's just uh, shredded beef, cooked with onion, tomato, poblano pepper, and bell pepper. Oh my God, this, everything looks amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, and you also do your own uh, agua de Jamaica? We do, we make it fresh. Uh, the pickled peppers that we do here, everything that we make in house is fresh, made every day. We make our own flour tortillas and corn tortillas, so everything is handmade. Oh, great, that's amazing. Can you tell us more about the place, like your schedule, when do you open? Sure, 
Uh, well, we're located in Ruta del Medano. We're part of the, the group. Uh, our hours is uh, Thursday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we just work for breakfast and lunch. Okay. We pretty much serve breakfast all day. Okay, perfect. And nobody needs a reservation? We do need a reservation? No, we do not work with reservations. Just walk-ins? Just walk-ins. Oh, that's great. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Mario, for everything. And now we're going to taste all of this delicious food. And stay tuned, guys. First, we're going to try out their panela asada. And this is very interesting, you guys. Green sauce and red sauce, a little nopalitos underneath. So we're just going to go into it. We're gonna cut a little bit. Ooh. And this is on the red side and I don't discriminate. So we're gonna grab a little bit from the green side as well. And they have homemade tortillas. So we're going to grab homemade tortillas. Look at these. Just gonna grab half of it. We're gonna make our little I'm gonna cut a little bit of this. And now we're gonna grab our queso panela with red sauce. Mmm. My mouth is watering. Green sauce. A little nopalitos in here. Oh my god. And now it's tasting time. Y'all know what's gonna happen, so provecho. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> We're gonna grab a little bit of this red sauce because look at this. Mmm. Fun fact, I love panela. Like a lot. I would eat it all day, every day. So more sauce. Mmm. Mmm. And again, we're not gonna discriminate so. Let's also grab some green sauce. Mmm. Delicious. Ooh, the nopales is dripping. The, the juices from the nopales is dripping. And we're gonna grab more sauce. Yum. Mmm. This is definitely very delicious. Before we continue with this machaca ranchera, remember they do their own Jamaica water here. So we're just gonna clean our palate. We're gonna grab some tortilla de harina. And oh man, I'm already like tasting this in my head. This is gonna be so delicious. We're gonna grab tons of machaca. Yum. I'm gonna grab more machaca here. Woohoo! With some potatoes. Oh, these potatoes look bomb. Okay, some beans. We are gonna add everything. Gonna do a little taquito. And now we're gonna go at it. So, provecho. Mmm. It's very juicy. Mmm. The potatoes are bomb, you guys. Just how they look, they're bomb. And the machaca, oh, so soft. The sauce is really good, like I said. Mm. I'm just gonna shut up a little bit and keep tasting, so sorry. Mm. Very good. And now for our grand finale, you guys. Look at this torta, this chilaquil torta. You guys have no idea how excited I am to just be messy with this because it looks delicious. It has asada, has chilaquiles, has an egg, some frijoles. So we're just gonna, we're not gonna be fancy today, okay? Today I'm gonna just gonna pull my hair on the back and we're just gonna go right at it. Man, we're just gonna grab this. Apologies if you see my face running with sauce cheese whatever this is look at this look at all this <laughs> this is gonna be fun and exciting and um i'm very hungry right now so <sighs> like we say over here provecho and excuse me
Mmh. Mmh. Oh, chula, chill. Do you see the egg running? <laughs> I'm gonna attack that. Mmm. Mmm. This is so good. Look at this. Mmm. So thank you so much guys for joining us. Um, we're almost done, well I'm almost done, but if you want to know more about this place, their dishes, and what they have even more to offer, you can definitely go and check them in Instagram, Facebook, and in their website as El Arroyo Cocina Mexicana. And if you want to know more about me and where I'm heading at, you can definitely go and check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Foodie from TJ. Thank you so much, guys. Where are we going next? Can't tell you, it's a secret. Um, but you have to stay tuned to know where we're heading. So, see you next time. Thank you so much, Denise Kakobo. Always wonderful and delicious, of I course. Know. I can't wait. But now, this is another one that I can't wait. Let's go to Mexicali and learn more about craft beer. Hey there, my friends. This is Baja Window to the South. My name is Jesus Castellanos. And remember, we are visiting all the taps of craft beers in Mexicali. And today we are with Malgro, with Javier. Javier, ¿qué onda? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, muy bien. Aquí andamos. ¿Dónde es el nombre de Malgro? Malgro es en el, el, el conjunto de dos palabras, dos marcas diferentes. Este, yo tenía el proyecto de, 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 de eh, Guerrero Cervecería. Y lo que son ahorita actualmente mis socios, eh, ellos tenían el nombre de Maltercio, pues. Y en la lluvia de ideas, cuando decidimos juntarnos, este, una de ellas fue Malgro, pues, y, y fue por la que optamos. Algo que estábamos platicando antes de entrar a la plática es, la pasión no es suficiente para tener una cervecería, ¿no? No, no, hay que darle. Es la cervecería, o sea, actualmente uno la hace de todo, pues, de contador, abogado, administrador cocinero, o sea, realmente te, te absorbe, pues es, es, es una empresa grande, pero a y pequeña te, escala, y te, y te desde enseña, un inicio. Claro, y te enseña a mover el brazo de venta. Carmen, ¿cuáles son las cervezas que tienes conectadas o que ha hecho Malgro a través de la historia? Oh, la verdad, sí, sí son bastantes, actualmente mantenemos las de línea y vamos sacando nuevas, pues, pero han sido muchas. Nosotros tenemos Haciendo Cheve desde el 2014, uh -huh. Ya te imaginarás, o sea, la experimentar es lo, es lo bonito, pues. <risa> ¿Cuál es uno de los estilos más difíciles que has hecho? Ah, pues, ¿qué será? Pues cada uno tiene su complicación, pero yo creo que las lagers, las lagers yo creo que entre los cerveceros es este, o sea, que quede limpia, clara y, y, y este, sin alguna desviación o algo así, porque se nota, pues. La puedes ver, ¿no? Y me así es, es. Me... sí. Carnalito. Estamos pisteándonos ahorita 7 a.m. Yo sé que es como bueno. Sí, es, es parte la, la, del la. estandarte, ¿no? De Malgro. Platícanos la historia. Me encanta la historia de 7 a.m. Fíjate, la 7 a.m. Yo la estimo demasiado porque cuando nos juntamos, este, yo con mis socios, la primera cheve que realmente hicimos como Malgro fue la, la 7 a.m. No se, no se llamaba 7 a.m. en ese entonces, pero sí teníamos la visión de meterle café a una, a una estado, pues. Va porque creo que lo comentaba hace rato, es, es lo mejor de dos mundos, pues el, el café y, y cerveza. Y, la, y, la, y tuvo su presentación en, en Mexicali Beerfest. Descríbenos esta cheve, preséntanos la baja window. Tú, del, del café, fíjate que ahorita sí nos hemos dado la tarea de, de, de estar, o sea, principalmente que el café sea tostado aquí, no es como un café comercial ni nada. Pues. Y se ha, se ha ido trabajando de la mano con los tostadores, de que sabes que te dan notas tropicales, de notas de caramelo, de cosas de esas, que se le añade todavía con un valor agregado a la chef, pues, claro. con, con ese tipo de... ¿Por qué se llama 7 AM, Carlos? Ah, esa fue otra. <risa> eh, eh, ahí interactuamos con la, con la gente. Sí sabíamos que le íbamos a poner, por ejemplo, algo que te... que el simple nombre dijera como que café y... Café. Y, y, y 7 AM, pues, este, hicimos como un post donde decía, ¿qué hora te tomas tú tu café? Pues, y la que más... Es, eh, el, horario. El, el, el horario que más tuvo era, era el de las 7 de la mañana. 7 de la mañana. Ok. ¿Qué va a experimentar? Digo, yo estoy probándola, encuentro unos sabores, 
encuentro un perfil, sí, ¿eh? sí, la mezcla sí. de los dos mundos, pero vamos a explicarle a la gente qué es lo que va a encontrar en esta cerveza. Pues que la 7M, o sea, lo, lo, lo que uno busca es de que traiga las notas de chocolate, uh -huh. lo tostado, este, un amargor que, que, que sobresalga, que tenga mucha personalidad y en aroma que se siente el café. Pues, inicialmente, o sea, si lo, si lo hueles con los ojos cerrados, que, que, que huela pues, el café. Que, a puedas, mañana, que, pues. puede, que puedas confundirte con, un, es, con, con un, café. Un, café un café de las 7 de la mañana. Cuando, cuando respiras bien. <risa> ¿Con qué acompañarías una 7 AM, Carlos? Con un postre, yo creo, de chocolate. Si sí, hemos, o sea, el, lo que es este, el, el dulcecito con el amargor de, 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 entre la Chevy y café, se me hace demasiado rico. ¿Cuál ha sido el postre que más ha empatado con 7 AM? Pues yo creo que este, ¿cómo se llama? Como la rosca judía, pero de chocolate. Ok, ok. Y a lo mejor un, este, un cheesecake. Tienes otras Cheves y hay una que me gusta mucho, Kiss the Sky. Una Kiss the Sky yo creo que va subiendo, es, es un estilo que lo hemos estado haciendo creo que los últimos dos años, pero ya ahorita se ha vuelto la favorita de, 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 la, de los clientes. Pues. ¿Dónde podemos encontrarte en las redes sociales? En, en Facebook, tenemos dos redes sociales, eh, Facebook como Cerveza Malo y en Instagram igual, Cerveza Malo. Algo que podemos mencionar de Malgro ya en el cierre es que... Malgro se enfoca mucho en tener eventos, música, poesía, comedia, cine, Así todo es. para la gente que viene, se lleve una experiencia regularmente, en un fin de semana vas a tener un evento. Así es, sí, entre, entre semanas inclusive, y ahorita hemos trabajado bastante con, con artistas locales, pues, wow. tanto de arte, de stand-up, este, mucha música. This is Javier, this is Malgro. It's really a great choice to come over to their tap and try their beers. This is Baja Window to the South. My name is Jesus Castellanos. See you next time. Keep watching the videos, guys. Bye. Thank you, Jesus, for that interview. Now, there's another craft beer that I have on my list. Now, let's find with Denitza another one of the amazing, talented people that we have here in Tijuana. <laughs> Welcome to Baja Window to the South. Today I am very happy and very excited to have this wonderful woman here with me. I am her fan. She is a musician, an artist, and I admire her so much, okay? And she has a new single that she is going to talk about here. So, Juliana, bienvenida. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being with us. I'm very excited to see you. I love you, you know. And um, please tell us about your single and yes. what are you up to right now? I mean, first of all, thank you for having me again. Uh, it's so nice to see you too, because I also admire you and I love you so much. Um, yes, I'm very excited to uh, pretty much uh, tell you about my, about my single. It's called Ahora Si. Uh, it's it's sort of like a breakup song, but it's most about mostly about a new start. It's it's about like beginning to again, and pretty much knowing why you're leaving something behind, and just like making sure like you're getting out of your comfort uh, comfort zone. Uh, I don't know. I talk about like, like a lot of things, but mostly about you know getting getting through that rough time and starting again and loving yourself again it's a, it's a lot about that so it's it's a very personal song but also it's it's very acoustic very me I don't know it's I I <laughs> it was a whole process to record it because I wrote it like a few years ago but I think once it finally came out it's just been like very nice to see like people respond to it and yeah and yeah the result okay, you're very authentic I mean you're full of life I love that you create everything that you write. I mean, you're like you, you're really an artist or not an artist, and you're gonna do so well. I can tell. Yeah, okay? yeah, thank you. And I wish you all the best all the time. And um, and and and, and, and you know, I mean, you were telling me it, it, it looks like you were. It, it was like so personal, and 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 it's a part of you at the end of the day, right? Yes. This song, <laughs> like most of your music, right? Yeah. Um, 
something that you went through and I believe that people want to see that, that unique part of you and that's what you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's I think my favorite part about music. Uh, I like to sing, but my, like my favorite part is writing the music, writing the songs, writing the lyrics especially. I try to make, at least the things that I release is mostly my personal experiences or like something that happened very close to me to a friend or something, something like that. Uh, but yeah, this one was like a very personal story and then eventually I, I like left it in the vault. I left it, uh, you know, like reposando, and uh, and then eventually I started to record it, and and it, it's crazy how like it could like something could happen to you, but then like life happens too, and then that same song applies in so many ways. So I think, yeah, it, it was like a very interesting experience, but overall, like the people that I collaborated with, it just made it like so different and, and so me at the, at the same time. So um, the cool part about, uh, I think, releasing it in this stage is that I'm recording new stuff. So uh, hopefully it's gonna be that, that transition to the new stuff and just performing it live. Uh, I have a performance very close to us. Well, in, in the summer I'm, I'm gonna be performing and like in my social media you can see like the, the dates. Uh -huh. But I've been doing like a solo looping thing so it's very fun to like also incorporate that recording into like the actual live performances. So. Yes, this is gonna be great. I can't, I mean, I, I, I would love to see you, you know, yes. I bet it's gonna be so special. And um, now that we're talking about where we can find your social media, please share with us yes. where we can look for for all sure. The updates. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm in Instagram, <laughs> all social media as Juliana Music. It's spelled with a G, G I U L I A N A Music. Uh, you can also find my music in Spotify, all music platforms, uh, YouTube, and yeah, pretty much listen to the songs. You are all over the place <laughs> right now and growing, okay? Yeah. I'm now see you when since you're, you started yeah. pretty much. So. It's just, it's just great to see you, you know, yeah, and um, thank you. The, so it, the, the days we can check there, what else yeah. is coming for you or something that you would like to share, what you've been up to? I am releasing an EP, an acoustic EP of most of the songs that I've re been releasing in the last year, so hopefully you'll see that soon. Mm -hmm. And then I'm working on an album, so that is going to be probably later this year or next year but yeah i'm i'm very very excited about that and uh, yeah i'm pretty much just sharing everything in social media so you'll see uh, a lot of me over there you're gonna have a lot about juliana okay so please don't miss it check it out all her social media and um, we're gonna be playing a little bit, you know, of uh, this yeah. new single that we're very excited, and we're gonna be following you, okay, Thank and uh, you. to see what are you what are you up to. Is there something else that you would like to add? Thank you so much for having me, and hopefully I can uh, share it with you guys uh, the next singles and hopefully the album. Yeah. Yes, please, please, we would love to. Yes. Thank you, thank you again, Juliana. Yeah, okay, yeah. it's really a pleasure, I am telling you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> and thank you for joining us here in Bajo Window to the South. Thank you, Denitza and Juliana. Don't forget to follow her. Now let's find out about La Rumorosa. Do you know that we have special adventures for you and everything that has to do with UFOs? An encounter from another planet, UFO Camp comes to La Rumorosa, a camp that brings together the best UFO phenomenon researchers. If you are passionate about topics related to space and investigation regarding the existence of life on another planet, this event is for you. The World UFO Camp consists of investigative reporters, scientists, and writers dedicated to the observations and study of identified flying objects, sharing their finding through conferences and panel discussions. The Sky Watchers Convention will feature the participation of different Mexican and American researchers, including archaeologist Jose Aguayo, Carlos Clemente, and Diana Maussan. The event will take place in La Rumorosa on Saturday, July 8th and Sunday, July 9th. The event has limited capacity and costs 1,900 pesos. 
which includes conferences, surveillance, exhibitions, meditations, as well as water, coffee, tea, and bread for the sharing. For more information, you can visit the official UFO Camp website. And if you go to La Rumorosa, July 8th and 9th, please make sure to say hi to my friends, those UFOs. <laughs> I love it. And thank you so much for joining us in Baja Window to the South. Please like us, share our show if you like it. Any comment is welcome. And of course, see you next week. <laughs>